All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over the line weaver Burke plot. For the rest of this video, I'm just gonna call it the line weaver plot or Burke plot because it's just too long to say the entire name. So here's the agenda for this video. First, I'm gonna explain really slowly what the equation means and why we use it. Then we're gonna go over a really simple graph of the line weaver plot. Then we're going to go over an example midterm question you would see on this because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube about the line weaver plot and most of them suck because they just go over what the line weaver equation is, but they don't actually put numbers to it. So how do you expect to know it when you actually go to the midterm, right? So that's where we're going to be different here. We're actually going to put numbers. We're going to make this like a real midterm so you know what to do. So let's start. In my last video, I mentioned that the michaelis menten equation was actually fairly inaccurate in calculating enzyme kinetics, like Km and Vmax. Here comes the Lineweaver Burke plot. The Lineweaver, so what it is, is two people came together. One was named Lineweaver and one was Burke. They came together, they looked at that michaelis menten equation, and they're like, hold my beer, I can do it better. So that's what they did. Here's what we have. One over the initial velocity is equal to Km over Vmax times one over the substrate concentration plus one over Vmax. So this is format look familiar to you. Well, back in algebra, whenever that is, you learned about the equation of the line. That's exactly what it is. It's just this looks a little too fancy. It's the same thing. So y in y equals mx plus b, y equals 1 over initial velocity. m, or the slope, is km over vmax. x is 1 over the substrate concentration. And then B or the Y intercept is the Y is sorry, is one over V max right here. So how do you know what the difference is between the line weaver plot and the Michaelis Menten plot? T this is a very typical MCAT question. They love to talk about these two things, line weaver and Michaelis Menten. The line weaver plot is the one with a straight line. It's that easy. That's all you have to look for. The one with the straight line is the line weaver plot. The one with the curve is the Michaelis Menten plot. That's it. So, the line weaver Burke equation is known as a double reciprocal of the Michaelis Menten equation. Why is this? Well, let's look at the plot here, the line weaver Burke plot, so we can answer that question. So please notice, on the y-axis, we have 1 over the initial velocity. Boom, right there. The x-axis is 1 over the substrate concentration. But how do we get this? Well, line weaver and Burke, look at the michaelis menten equation. So they saw that... They saw the initial velocity. So what they did is they took the reciprocal, so they put it to the negative first power, and they turned it around. And then that's how they got this. So that's one reciprocal right there. The other reciprocal is right here. So they took the substrate concentration from the michaelis menten equation, they put it to the negative first power, and then they get this. So it's a double reciprocal. So let's analyze this plot. What is it saying before we actually do the practice problem? Well, let's look at the y-intercept first. The y-intercept, or where the line crosses the y-axis, is 1 over Vmax. Please, 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 please be careful. This is not the Vmax value. So whatever value you get here is not the Vmax value. It's 1 over Vmax. So we'll show you how to solve that in the next slide, how to actually get the Vmax value. The x-intercept is 
negative 1 over km. Once again, please be careful. This is not the km value. This is the reciprocal of it. The slope of the line is km over Vmax, not Vmax over km. It's km on the top over Vmax. And that's the line we were plot. So let's do an example problem here. So here we have some numbers, something we're given on an exam usually. You'll know that this is the line weaver plot because notice the x numbers is 1 over substrate. The y numbers are 1 over initial velocity. If this was just a substrate without the 1 and an initial velocity, then it would be Michaelis Menten. But since it's 1 over substrate, 1 over initial velocity, we know we're going to be making a line weaver plot. So here are the values. Let's put them in. So first, you have to make the graph. The graph goes as follows. The y-axis is 1 over initial velocity. The units is minutes per millimolar. The x-axis is 1 over substrate. And the units is 1 over millimolar. All right. So here's what they do. is have to plot these numbers. So we get... 0.33 and 0.10. So 0.33 and 10. Right there? Yeah. Right there. So that's the first one. 0.2 and 0 0.07. 0 0.2 and 0 0.07. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Point zero three and point zero three, point zero three, point zero three, t -t 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 -t, right there. Point oh one and point zero, sorry, point zero one, right there. Okay. Okay. Now notice that this is not a perfect straight line. That's okay, because the line weaver is not meant to be accurate. It's just a better estimate. So now let's draw our line, roughly. Yeah, that's good enough. OK. So we got our line now. So what do we do next? So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the y-intercept. The y-intercept, we're going to call this like 0 0.025. So this is 1 over V max equals 0 0.025. OK? Because remember, the y intercept is 1 over V max. So we got 0 0.025, wherever the line hits the y-intercept. So we have to estimate it to be 0 0.025. Now, let's talk about the x-intercept. The x-intercept, so this is negative 1 over km equals this looks to be about uh, negative 0 0.07. Okay. This is not the km value. Remember this. So here's what we're going to do now. We have these values. We found the x-intercept right here to be 0 0.07, negative 0 0.07. We found the y-intercept to be 0 0.025. So here's what we're going to do. On your calculator, all you have to do is type in, let's do the Vmax first. Vmax, so it's going to be 0 0.025. Make sure you put this in parentheses. Actually, it doesn't really matter, but just put it in parentheses. And you're going to put it to the negative first power. We get 40. This is Vmax right here. We got Vmax. This is our Vmax value right here. So for the km value, let's do the exact same thing. You're putting in a calculator, surround with parentheses, 0 0.07. Don't include the negative sign because 
the negative one and the negative there, it just cancels out. So don't worry about that. So you're gonna put in a calculator. You're gonna enter it like this. Uh, 0 0.07 and put it to negative first power. We should get 14.2. So it equals 14.2. Okay. So now we got KM. We also got Vmax. It's the KM. So now we can calculate the slope. So remember the slope of the line equals KM over Vmax. Okay. The slope. So we got KM. The KM value we calculated was 14.2. So 14.2 divided by. We got the Vmax value of 40. So we put this, let me just uh, do this, put this to the negative first power. So we get 40. So 14.2 divided by 40. We get a slope of 0 0.355. That's the slope of the line. So there we go. That's a, exactly something you would see on a midterm. It's calculating how we, how we calculate v, uh, Vmax, how we calculate Km, how we calculate the slope. We just did all of that. So, there we go. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Now the next video we're gonna do is the line weaver plot, but describing you know, competitive inhibition and stuff like that. So until next time, later.